Hey there, this is Lynn Allen. Welcome to another AutoCAD tip courtesy of Catalyst Magazine. Happy holidays to you wherever you are in the world. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you needed to go into somebody else's drawing and just add a few objects? Maybe you needed to add a dimension or some hatching. Um, or some text, something like that, and you have no clue what they did in their drawing. And you don't want to have to go on a big reconnaissance mission to figure it out. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do exactly that. All right, so let's, I'm in this drawing, and I need to add in an additional object just like this one here. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a polyline, has a specific layer, it has a specific line type. Um, please note, I'm on layer zero, incidentally. I want to add one more, no problem. I'm going to select it. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to say add selected. And then very simply, notice it put me on the same layer as that object, just temporarily. I don't have to change my current layer even. The lazy part of me loves that. I'm going to go ahead and just draw this additional object and you'll see same properties as the original. All right, I need to add a dimension, just like this one. And if I do a right click on it, I want you to see it says remove style override. So now I know it has overrides on it. I don't want to think about that. I want to just do another dimension just like that with three places to the right of the decimal, just like that. Some of these don't have that. So um, they're obviously different style or different settings. No problem. Select it. Right click. Add selected. Go ahead and just pick wherever you want that dimension to go. I'll break some drafting standards. No problem. <laughs> but you'll see it looks it's exactly the same as the one that I selected. No thought process required. I still don't know what the settings were on that. It doesn't matter. How about some text? I need to add some text. I'm going to go ahead and select this text right here. Right click. I want some text just like that text. I want it the same height, the same everything. I'm going to go ahead and pick the start point. I do have to tell the rotation angle. That's okay. I am willing to do that. And let's type some more text. Look at just like that. It's very low stress. Okay, add selected. That's one way of doing it. All right, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. Let's go to a different join file. A very, very complicated join file. I just like this one because it's really clear what I'm going to show you. All right, so you can also do this very easily with tool palettes. All right, so I'm going to do a, a control three to put my tool palette on here. If you haven't used tool palettes, they're so easy to work with. I am going to do a right click and I'm going to say that I need to add a new palette. Okay, and I'm just going to show you a couple of these. It's empty. All right. So I want to do some cross hatching, just like this cross hatching here. I could do add selected also, just so you know that's an option. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this cross hatch pattern. I'm going to do a right click. That's the trick. Right click and I'm going to drag and drop it over to my palette. And now it knows. I have one crosshatch pattern on here. Now you can go in here, you can go to properties and you can make modifications to it. You can change the name to be, you know, honeycomb or lens hatch pattern or who knows what the situation is. You, But no, it knows the scale factor, it knows the angle, it knows everything about that particular hatch pattern. It's really, really smart. I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to go ahead. I would you know, maybe use tool palettes if I'm going to be doing this type of thing over and over and over again in the same drawing. It's a little bit faster than add selected. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Very simply, you can drag and drop that anywhere, you know, put it in anywhere you need, you feel the need to have a crosshatch pattern of honeycomb. <laughs> also easy. So this guy hangs around. Control three puts it on the screen and you can now grab that and use it over and over and over again. Mm, how about for blocks? Okay. This particular block is going one direction. I could copy it. Or if I'm going to be using it a lot, I can select it, do my little right click and drag and drop it over to my palette. And now when I select it, I'm going to move my cursor over here. Look, it doesn't even ask me for rotation and go, how fast is that? I can just knock these guys right into place. That was a terrible placing. <laughs> That's because of that. Now, but you get the idea. I can do it again. Let's see if I can be a better shot this time. Let's go ahead and drag and drop that guy. I have to stay clear of all those object snaps. There we go. It's a little bit better anyway. <laughs> so in this situation, at the rotation angle, if I do right click and I go into properties, you will see that the rotation angle is 180 and it remembers that. Um, you can override that. You can tell it to prompt rotation if you want to. But I kind of like the fact that I've got cars going different directions. I'll put them all on here and I'm just going to go boom, 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 boom. I don't even have to think about it. I can do this with text. I can do it with other objects as well. 
So that's another way of doing it if you are in to tool palettes. All right, so whatever works best for you, but the goal here is to get in and out of that coworkers giant as quickly as possible. And I think that these two ways are gonna help you do exactly that. All right, so stay warm, and I hope to see you back here in uh, at the beginning of the new year. Absolutely so. Hey, happy new year as well.